My name is Manda Kangai. I'm a junior mechanical engineer for Eon Next for Loche Racing. I'm going to my fourth year of engineering, um, aerospace engineering at the University of Cambridge. I was introduced to Extreme as a student ambassador. Um, that's when in Italy I met Mariella Bailey. Um, we got talking in the catering tent, just talking about motorsport, her experiences, how I was finding it as was my first motorsport experience. I got invited for an interview to be part of Eon Next Veloce Racing's team as a junior engineer. It was a really nice environment just to learn more about the team, what I could bring and what I could contribute. And then from there, 2022, that's when I started my role as junior mechanical engineer. If you told me when I joined Cambridge that I would be traveling, doing engineering alongside my studies, I would not think that it would be possible. Um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to apply what I learned at Cambridge alongside engineers and mechanics who have been working in the industry for so many years. Just to be around that wealth of experience, um, it's been an honour. I'm really grateful for Hamilton's Commission, the Racing for Initiative and Eon Next Veloce Racing for giving me this opportunity to be a junior mechanical engineer. Motorsport is so rewarding and I think that not only can motorsport offer a lot to young people, but young people can offer a lot to motorsport. So I think it's really good to increase that kind of diversity, inclusion and critical thinking in the sport. So today we're in Montenegro, Portugal for an RX2 weekend. I've been invited by Yellow Squad to be part of Molly's team. So I'm shadowing the mechanics, the engineers. I think I'll be in the sponsor's tower as well. Today we have some heats, um, a semi-final and a final. So yeah, fingers crossed Molly makes it to the podium. It's a new racing discipline for me. So yeah, I'm really excited for the weekend. We've covered a whole range of disciplines in my engineering course. I've specialised in third and fourth year in aerospace engineering, so looking at fluid flow in subsonic and sonic conditions, the effect of friction and heat transfer, as well as vehicle dynamics. Studying engineering opens so many doors. Just being able to have the skills of problem solving, creativity, finding solutions for yourself and organisation is very beneficial. So this is our RX2 e car. It's a bit smaller than the Extreme Eco. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's basically a purpose-built chassis for Rallycross. Two motors, but yeah, everything's a bit smaller. Uh, not quite the same suspension travel oh, yeah. that we have in the Extreme Eco. Cars. It's, it's uh, quite different there. There's been a definite increase in green jobs. For engineering students like me, this opens so many opportunities for the future to apply our knowledge into a more sustainable environment. Yeah, this is inside. So we've got a few more nice. um, dials that we can play with because this car has regen. We do have launch control, which is another cool okay. thing that this car has that the Extreme e car doesn't have. Well, you basically press that, lock the handbrake on, and then you're flat out on the throttle, and then you just, when it goes through, you just let the handbrake go. So there's, oh. yeah, that's something that we play around with quite a lot at race weekends. And it's something, yeah, something I'm still wrapping my head around how to, to make it work most effectively. So. I'm hoping you can help me with that. Of course. <laughs> so how much power does this have compared to the Extreme car? The RX3 car has about 270 kilowatts. I mean, yeah, the Extreme cars, you know, it depends where, what location we, we go to. Um, and yeah, it's a very different, I guess, driving style in many ways because the tracks, um, most of these tracks here, it's that mixed surface with tarmac and gravel and normally we're taking off on tarmac. So we have, yeah, a lot more grip um, off the line with these cars yeah. but yeah then we're managing yeah I guess not not as rough but the mixture of surface a different tyre um, so yeah it's, it's quite a the electric side is, is similar but there's so many different variables in the driving and the car than, than Extreme yeah. A. It's been great to see the development of electric racing championships during my time at Cambridge. Before starting my junior engineering role, I didn't have much experience with electric racing or using electric fuel cells in the context of motorsports. But now being up and close and personal with the car, looking at the onboard data, using the telemetry, I have a better experience of how electrification can be used in motorsports. Now I get the opportunity to transfer those skills into RX2E, another electric racing championship, so a whole new challenge for me, which I'm very excited about. Better. <laughs> I feel like it. I'm trying to do the fastest tyre bedding in the universe at the start here. Oh, yeah, yeah I just snapped the cable tie way too early. <laughs> and then it was... So yeah. then I just had brakes so late. <laughs> and was like, no, that was I saw the other start to break and I was like, I think I'll wait for a second. 
and then was like literally a second <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, could be some yeah. stuff, and stuff. What do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, blow all, all, all the gravel. Okay. Blow everything. Ah, I see. Yeah, both sides. Yeah. Yeah. In the back. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 It's very hot, you can feel the heat coming off the, the bridge. Okay, this is pretty good. Okay, we're going to start with this. It's really important to have a space in the industry just to get hands on experience, ask questions, be in the moment. In these situations, it's high pressure, it's time limited. It's not something that you can learn just from university. So it's been great to apply what I learned at university, but in the engineering scenarios. Just talking to people, being in that environment is really important. So we move on then to RX2E and uh, it has been a phenomenal year so far, hasn't it? The car's already down on pre-grid. So Marco Mura will go off pole alongside him, Isaac Schurkvist, who will know that uh, he now cannot catch Nils Anderson ahead of him. Molly Taylor and Sergio Diaz make up the second row of the grid for RX2E semi-final two. So we're at pre-grid right now, so the scrutineers is checking all the cars, um, making sure it's in regulations, we're just lining up to them on our race. Even though there are several electric racing championships, the challenges that they pose are quite different. From Extreme, which is very data-driven, using telemetry to make informed decisions on strategy, to RX2E, where it's more on driver feedback and the feel, and more about tyre strategy. Championships are ever-evolving, starting from the combustion engines now using electric fuel cells. Innovation technology has a big part to play in the future of motorsports, and it's really exciting to see where it takes us in the future. Molly's been fairly fruity on the brakes going down into turn one, hasn't she? Last of the late breakers, and occasionally a little bit more, shall we say. We go green. It's a good start from Shirtfist, isn't it? In the yellow squad car. He will cut across, I'm sure, in front of Marco Mura for the inside line in. He does. Molly Taylor also into the back of Mura once again. Mura a little bit sideways. Molly Taylor, she's not shy going down to turn one of the brakes, is she? We've been seeing that for, the, for both the heats today as well. Not at all. Nudging the rear of Marco Mura there that almost helped him get up the inside of Isaac Shirtfist. Uh, as a result, Marco Murray dives into the Joker for this uh, second time of asking, gets sideways in the middle of the extra route, he's going to be under pressure here, but gets out comfortably ahead of Diaz. Uh, I've had the pleasure of driving these cars and they are genuinely easy to drive in that they're easy to operate, but getting the sort of pace consistently out of them is very difficult. In the Joker this time around for Shukri, he's just to cover off Murray. Right. It's going to be Shukris that holds on to take the semi-final two victory. He will join the driver he's battled with all season, Nils Anderson, from the front row of the final later on this afternoon. What's great about this new era of electric racing is not only is there a sustainability aspect, but there's also the eco opportunities aspect. At E.ON Next Veloce Racing, we have a female driver that participates in Extreme and RX2E. It's been great to work with Bolly for the past couple of years. I love her way of thinking, how she's very data driven and analytical when it comes to approaching different sections of the track. I've learned a lot from her in terms of strategy calls and of course communication skills between driver and engineer. It's great to see that gender diversity within the team and it shows in the quality of work that we produce. How's the track um, designation for each lap? Is it quite different or...? Yeah, it's getting quite rough. Yeah. Places, like some places it sweeps out, so where it's like gravel on top of tarmac it gets a bit grippier. Yeah. Uh, but then also when it's just gravel it's just getting quite rough. Gender quality is so important in motorsport. There are so many talented female drivers, engineers, mechanics who could bring so much to the sport. And I think having an access point is really important for the future of motorsport. How should you approach that this corner? It depends. On this track, you have three critical corners. This one is important to get yeah. the most the speed out to this corner. And you have to put settle this corner to bring the speed through this. Yeah. Mostly three corners to settle. 
It's been a privilege to work with people in engineering positions that I would love to be in in the future. It's very great to have that kind of access. Just being able to see them, it makes me believe that I can attain that position. And I think that's really important. This is pretty tight. Yeah. The fastest way is the shortest way, so it's easy. Mm. So this is a good one. And this is the best, and then we have 3.6. Yeah. So Isak is the best on the job, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. in the that's how. That's our work, how we do it. Yeah, try to that do makes it. sense. Try, try, try yeah. to do it. Race days are super intense. That's why it's great to have a good team behind you. Everyone has their role to play to make a successful weekend. You really have to trust each other's judgment in these high pressure scenarios. And having this experience myself, it's really reassuring to be able to rely on your fellow team member, knowing that you both have the same common goal to win as many championships as possible. Everybody wants to win the final round of the year in the European Championship. It's Anderson on pole alongside him, the man who's pushed him all year long in the championship, Isaac Shirkvist. Marco Muru, do not rule that young man out. He's been phenomenally quick this weekend with Luca Flerma alongside him. And then Mikhail Arlen Kocholinski and Molly Taylor on row three. In RX2E you have spotters. This involves going to the spotters tower, which oversees most of the track. You have radio connections with the driver and the team principal. So during the race, the spotter relays important information to the driver, adapting strategy, telling the driver when to joker, making those important calls. That's driver's preference. We're now under starter's orders. We've already got three red lights. There's four. Oh, we're on the hold. We go green now, and it's a great start from Nils Anderson and Isaac Scherfis. Nothing to choose between them. Molly Taylor in the red car, choosing to stay all the way out on the outside. She'll be latest on the brakes. Can she to get the car turned in? Yes, she can. But it's Nils Anderson and Isaac Scherfis, first and second, coming out of turn one. What a start from Molly Taylor, but just last day, didn't she, when Blurma had that moment on the brakes. Molly was also having her own moment on the brakes as well. Just got four, so right. She runs sixth on the road. <laughs> So hard to overtake in Rallycross and particularly in cars that are completely identical. Anderson and Shirtfist push on. Remember, it's only Mark and Muru and Molly Taylor who have gone into the Joker so far. No pressure behind. Right Anderson goes super quick in the final sector of that lap. Takes three tenths out of Shirtfist. Shirtfist coming back at him in the braking in turn one. Shirtfist has been quick this year not quick enough to stop Anderson on more occasions. Isaac Scherfis had absolutely no choice when he saw Anderson carry on and not take the joker. Scherfis had to go in. That gives it, that is his only chance of securing a podium. I tell you what, he's come under extreme pressure there. Isaac Scherfis now absolutely has to get the hammer down to try and see if he can undercut Nils Anderson, who will joker on this final lap. Oh, contact between Shirtfist and Michaela Kocin, Arlen Kocinski, she's facing the wrong way. Unnecessary contact, really, between two drivers on different strategies. But we crossed the line, it's the final lap of the race of the year for RX2E, and Nils Anderson takes the victory here in Portugal and the championship. Even though there are female role models in motorsport, I'm still aware that there isn't enough female participation in racing engineering jobs. This is definitely something that motorsport can improve on. I would definitely encourage women to get into motorsport. It develops who you are as a person, your skills, your problem solving skills, creativity, as well as the people who you meet along the way. It is such a unique industry and I would love to see more women being a part of it. This is my final year of engineering at Cambridge. I'm really excited for what the future holds. I'm hoping that the future of motorsport is more sustainable, inclusive, and to see a lot more women in the paddock and to create an even bigger sense of community. It doesn't matter the background that you're from, your gender, your race, etc. There is a place for you in motorsport and we welcome you to come.